Once the war happened and Iraq was occupied through demoralization, uh, depression, a sense of powerlessness, they retreated. Whereas in 68, the movement grew slowly and built up to a peak. Here, the movement peaked to try and stop a war, and then it disappeared. Well, you mentioned the massive uh, protests in 2002 and 2003. We also had in this country massive protests uh, just a year or two ago uh, of uh, unprecedented protests of immigrants in, in the country yeah. uh, over uh, attempts to, uh, uh, to create uh, much more draconian laws against immigrants. Yet, again, that movement, too, rose and then dissipated, and there hasn't been any, uh, any significant continuity. Could it be that part of the problem is that there's been much less emphasis on the need for strong, radical and revolutionary organizations to move from one, from one uh, massive uprising to another to be able to provide some kind of accumulated strength to the progressive movement? Well, I think that is a part of the problem, is that there is no political organization uh, radical or otherwise, which can actually take these movements forward, except in Latin America, Juan, where, you know, country after country, you have giant social movements in Latin America, and then the result in Venezuela, in uh, Bolivia, in Ecuador, and now in Paraguay, of all places, is victories for people attached to these movements. So Latin America, I argue, is one of the few places where there is hope, but in the rest of the world, movements rise and fall. I mean, we could say, in a way, that an unusual development in world in Western politics is the size of audiences which Barack Obama is getting at his he's energized youth in a way that they weren't energized before. And it's foolish and sectarian to say, but it's the Democrats. Yeah, it is, but that's not the interesting thing. The interesting thing is that a young generation has become attracted to politics again. The question is, will it remain so if the Democrats win? But it's, it's an interesting phenomenon. Uh, or, um, but then the issue is, are they attached to, uh, to normal uh, Democratic Party politics, or are they attached to some kind of a real, uh, a, a, a potential social movement? That's the, the big issue is in terms of the, dem the, of well, the presidential it's, race. It's, uh, you know, the, the, the strength of this campaign for Obama has been that people think he is offering something different, that this will mark a break. And of course, on one level, his race, it will mark a phenomenal break if he's elected. But whether it will on other things, of course, remains to be seen. If he wins, my advice to everyone here is to be at the celebrations in Washington with with banners saying, pull out of Iraq now, is to make it a big anti-war moment, because since he's used his opposition to the war in Iraq in this campaign, one shouldn't stay aloof from this movement, but find ways of intervening in it. Uh, and, and in Europe today, or in, and in and Britain, what are the expectations of these presidential elections? Uh, in Europe, well, it varies from place to place. I mean, I think, for instance, in Italy, which has just had a big victory of the right, they will find it awkward, uh, because it's a very racist government now in Italy. Juan, I don't know whether people here follow it, but 68 percent of Italians want all the gypsies, the traveling people, expelled from the country forgetting that they, too, were victims of the Third Reich and were wiped out in the Second World War. So if America elects a black president, I think a lot of uh, Italian right-wingers will be slightly disconcerted, saying, oh, but these are the sort of people we're trying to get rid of from our country. In Britain, uh, they're prepared to go along with anyone Washington elects, both political parties, la New Labour and Conservatives. So they're not bothered. Their position will be support the White House, whoever's there. If Obama changes some things, they'll go along with that. They're not going to fight. Uh, but Europe, of course, is watching this quite keenly because in Germany, for instance, and other places, you have politicians who have been incredibly uh, upset by the Iraq business, and now Afghanistan, where they see no hope at all. So they are hoping that there will be a change of regime, uh, which will pull out and allow the Western world to breathe again without occupying countries. But, you know, that may be a hope which might not be fulfilled, but we'll see. 
Well, I, I want to thank you uh, very much for being with us. Uh, uh, Tarek Ali, you're going to be speaking tomorrow night, uh, May uh, 30th at 7.30 at the Baruch Performing Arts Center in a public forum on the new imperialism, old problems, and new challenges. Thanks again for thank being with us. Much. Tarek Ali, political activist, novelist, and historian, uh, an autobiography of the 60s uh, is his book. He's speaking tomorrow at the Baruch Performing Arts Center here in New York. And that does it for today's program. Amy Goodman will be hosting the show from Los Angeles tomorrow. She's speaking in Grass Valley on Friday night and in UC Davis on Saturday night. For a copy of today's program, go to our website at democracynow.org. I'm Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Democracy Now!